All right. So, Zeke. Hello. Good God, man. How has the show been treating you? I, probably good. I can't remember anything that's happened. It's just a blur, <laughs> right? A blur. Like two days of Milk something happening. and demoing. Milkshakes. Yeah. Nice. Well, I have been telling Jared about the Aviator Travel Jib for like, I don't know, weeks. Okay? Thank you very much for supporting it on Kickstarter, by the way. Uh, it was my pleasure to support it on Kickstarter. I'm very, very pleased that you got funded. You had a great run at it. Yeah. Um, you've been, you have been working your booty off <laughs> trying to get these things manufactured. Yeah. Um, before, and before we talk about it, I want to actually show people what it is. Great. So let's, let's demo it, and then, uh, then we can talk about, if we have time, we'll talk about some of the challenges that you've been facing. So okay. first, what is it, and why did you build it? Uh, it's a jib or a crane, and it's based on the, uh, they're called Hollywood jibs. Uh, in Hollywood, when I'm making films for like 20 years, the most popular jibs are only about six feet because you can control them without a remote control head. You just control them from the front, and you don't have to have a giant crew, rent a truck, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, one guy can just hop on and do it. Yeah, it's usually two or three because those ones still weigh 100 pounds. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. So we use, a, we use a jib to get those kind of smooth uh, motion shots yeah, to sweeps. convey, some, yeah. It creates a, a three-dimensional appearance for from a two-dimensional television. Yeah. And uh, the best thing is the emotion. It just connects people emotionally immediately to the scene. Okay. So your idea, though, was, hey, as you just mentioned, sometimes those jibs weigh so much, you can't take those with you. Yeah. So for people like us who want to go places and we'd love to have a jib, but wedding you can't shooter. take, what are you going to do? Yeah, wedding shooters, extreme sports, uh, nature, just guys that have to travel to shoot. If you're getting on an airplane to shoot, you're shipping your jib or you're paying a ton extra money. Oh, yeah. Uh, I carry this on. I don't even check it. Uh, I've taken it on puddle jumpers. It just goes it, right in the little overhead. It's sitting right over your left shoulder, and you've oh. actually got it on a three-legged thing. Yeah. Would you show it to us? Show yeah. us how it works. Get up and go over there? Yeah. Go, sure. Just D Dave's got, his, got Dave's it. got the portable camera right there. Yeah. He's going to show you how. So it's got a... Uh, it's really small. It's got a fluid pan base built into the bottom. Uh, it doesn't come with the head. You can put whatever kind of fluid head or a ball head on there that you want. And uh, it's just like a tripod. Are you just getting it out the of the knobs? Might want to back up. And then just so. Hey Dave, that camera apparently that camera that, that camera's down. The wireless is down on it. So I'm going to grab this other one and just come over there real quick. I can't. I didn't hear what he said. Oh, okay. So you just pull it out. You make sure the bottom's level. Make sure the top's level. It's got a bubble level built in for you. And it's level. You hang your counterbalance. And you're good to go. It's got a nice little camera on there already for you. Oh, wow. Shoots 4K. Nice little camera. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's, it's almost like that, that yeah. Pentex yesterday. Sure. Hmm? I think you wanted me to fold it up. So what size cameras can you put on there? You can get up to seven and a half pound camera on the carbon fiber model. We also have a student edition that will hold six and a half pounds, but costs a little less. So that's the size. You know, hang on that one sec. Go 
ahead and snap that on there if you want. Might have to go from the other side, yeah. Snapped in, ready to go. So you put a digital SLR up there without a problem? Absolutely. On my website, there's a whole bunch of demo video. Most of it was shot with a 5D Mark II and a 17 to 40 L on top of a fluid head. Even though most of the time I don't even use the fluid head. You don't need the head. fluid head because you're moving the jib? Yep. You know? So what would you do with that now? Like, now you've got a camera mounted. Show us how you'd use it. All right. So... Wireless is working. It's, we're up. Okay. So you just take it and you do nice slow move. That's smooth. I'm watching it on the screen right now. And then you can rotate it and show the yeah, crowd and do, everybody. You can do sweeps. You can give people seizures, whip yeah. it around. Oh, that's really cool. So you know the trick to a good jib move, it's pretty easy to learn how to do it, is you start on something that's interesting or not interesting, and then you move very slowly towards something that's in more interesting. So that's that, going to add a lot of interest into your videos. Yeah, it's about revealing it so your audience sees something that was always there that they didn't know was there. It creates emotional connection. So when is, uh, I know the Kickstarter ended, you're about ready to start shipping. Yeah, they're almost done manufacturing. Uh, we would have been able to make them quicker, but we were expecting to sell about 100, and uh, we sold <laughs> over 500. And even though we're not marketing them right now, we keep getting orders, pre-orders. That creates a lot of challenges great. from a so, manufacturing standpoint. Yeah. It's, that, it's that Kickstarter thing where you get too popular too quick and it makes it hard to produce, but now you start catching up with it, which you know, you're ready to. Yeah, I mean, you manufacture it in a different way, right? If you're making 100, you yep. cut everything by hand. Uh, if you're making 1,000 of them, you make molds. It's faster, it's better, it comes out nicer, and... Uh, it also makes you more prepared a lot for the more future. Money. But it takes, a lot, <laughs> yeah. it takes longer as well, too. It takes you know? longer. That's the, that's the downside. Yeah. But you get a better product. Yeah. So um, w one thing that I'd like to just point out to everybody is if you are a photographer and you're not doing video yet, you're already a little behind the curve. So all photographer, photography and videography are coming together. I mean, you see that based on the fact that every camera has it built in. So what a tool like this does is allows you to put variety in your video that your competitors will not have. That's the big deal. And I am a person who has shot, I don't know how much video, I mean thousands of hours of video at this point, a lot, a lot of video. Um, even as steady as I am just from practice, trying to move up and down, I cannot do it the way you can do it with a jib. So having the ability to pack this thing up in a bag, put it over your shoulder, take it to some remote spot where you cannot get any heavy equipment and get shots that no one else can get. That no one's ever shot, And ever. that no one's ever shot like that. That is what differentiates your work from your competitors, and that's the kind of thing that will help you make a name for yourself and quadruple the price of the, of the content you're, you're creating. And I mean literally quadruple it. it. It makes your audience connect with your work. Mm -hmm. It creates an emotional connection when you move that camera in the right way. Yep. So we've got like three or four more minutes. Can you tell us about some of the challenges. You've been back and forth to China and all kinds of things trying to get these things made in, in a big mass quantity. What has that been like? Uh, China is an amazing place. Uh, the, the people are super, super nice. That All the people that I've run into, I'm sure there's some people who aren't real nice yeah. there, but the ones I ran into were real nice. And everybody's just working really hard. The biggest problem is that I don't speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. So and also the cultural differences. So if I reference something, 
Like I wanted to get, uh, I wanted to include vinyl stickers that just said the Aviator on it, and it took about two weeks to get that idea across. I probably could have just mailed them one faster. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's the biggest obstacle and the distance. Otherwise, it's. Uh, you know, it would have been nice if I could have made it here, but the retail on the carbon fiber kit is $850 with a padded bag and all the hardware and everything. And the exact same kit, if I manufactured in the U.S., my cost would have been $1,250. Wow. And my wife said, I can't make something for $1,250 and sell it for $850. Really? That's not <laughs> going to work out so well, no. huh? Yeah. No. Well, you know, they, they're doing, uh, their, their cost of labor is a lot cheaper there. Also, the, the factory is already set up yep. to manufacture. They, it's the factory that manufactures three -legged, most of three-legged things parts, and it's a lot of similar parts, and they're experts at it. They, they would, they're going to do a better job, probably, than any of the companies I could have found here. Yeah. So are you sharing, like, the carbon fiber rods and things? Are those the same ones we'd find if, in the three-legged thing uh, yeah. tripods we'd buy? Yeah, the, I'm going to be using the three-legged things uh, patented stealth carbon fiber, which you don't see the 70s disco stripe on it. This is just I the like final I like the 70s disco stripe. <laughs> you can have one of those then. I They're do. about 20% less strong than the... I don't like the, the disco stripe. <laughs> <laughs> All any right. questions in the room? Oh, let me let me turn to the chat room and see. Do you guys have any questions? Other than that, what what's the have you taken it beyond the seven pounds? Oh, price, please. Sorry, you mentioned yes. So the, yeah, and and there's two models, right? There's two models. the The carbon fiber is rated to seven and a half pounds. I have put a little more on it than that, but what happens is the it might create. Not only is, is it harder to get a good shot once you overload it, at some point you'll there's a spot where it's just going to break, and I haven't had the heart to find out what that amount is. What is it? But clearly, above seven and a half pounds, you start to lose functionality. Sure. Uh, it's we have to make a compromise when we make pro a product, any product. So I wish it could go to 30 feet compact down to an inch, <laughs> yeah. weigh an ounce, uh, and control itself, and also make milkshakes. That would be great. But I had to, uh, it was right near this last prototype, I had to stop the function of it making milkshakes and uh, just move on with it being a jib. The student version has all the same functions, but the specs are a little different. But it's uh, made of a, an aircraft aluminum and it'll hold six and a half pounds instead of seven and a half, and it weighs a pound more. So instead of two and three quarter, it's uh, about, or it's a little less than three and three quarter. And it costs how much? That's only 500 bucks. Yeah, and they both include bucks. a fluid pan base. So some companies charge $500 just for a fluid pan base. Yeah. Uh, and other companies make you put it on a fluid camera head. And as you probably know, if you've ever tried to level a jib on a fluid uh, head instead of a fluid base, Really hard bad to do. news. Hard bad to do. news. So they can get into an aluminum one that'll still hold any DSLR on the market, any small compact camera on the market. Absolutely. And most, they do that for five hundred. Most video bucks. cameras and too. most video cameras for five hundred bucks. Yeah. If they want to step it up to carbon fiber, which is what I did, then you know you're going to pay a little bit more, but you're going to if if that if that extra pound or or so of weight savings is worth it to you, which in my case, because all the crap I'm carrying yeah. it is, um, then you know what, 850, right? 850, so, yeah. Um, That's with the padded case too. And where can they find yeah. out more? Uh, AviatorCameraGear.com. One last question, yeah. and then we gotta go. How much does, how big is it when it's all compacted down and packed up? It's 24 inches. 24 inches. At its shortest dimension, it's 24 inches. At its lo longest, it's about six feet. Excellent. Nice. Thank you so much for coming Thank and demoing it for us and showing us. Um, Dave, can you help him get all disconnected and stuff? That'd be great. Thank, Thank you. Steve. Thank you, buddy. Really cool we stuff. Thank it. you. And really we'll, thank you for the support. I of appreciate course, it. Of course. Well